God bless you saints. I'd like to take my reading this afternoon from the book of Matthew chapter 13, reading at verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant, merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We realize your word is already blessed. Bless the preaching of your word. Bless the hearing of your word. Above all, bless the acting upon your word. Speak to us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the message entitled, The Pearl of Great Price, the messenger says, The man held the treasure in such a high esteem or of such great value that he valued it higher than all the things he had accumulated throughout his entire life up to that point. Valued it of great value up to that point. What is of great value to you today, friends? I would like to say, if anything comes between you and God, that becomes an idol. And God does not want us to have any idols. In Question and Answers, preached in 1954, he says, we've got to get in the spirit of the last days. The world's got to get in the spirit of the last days before the last days come. And I'm sure you'd know that they have come as in the days of Noah. And that's what we've got. We are in the last days. And men and women are sitting asleep and don't realize it. Are we in that number who don't realize it and asleep like the five foolish virgins? Now, this is the end times. We are living in the most extraordinary time of humankind. This is the age that everything will come to an end and where the final events concerning the world and the church will take place. The Lord will put an end to his redemptive work for his people. And his millennial kingdom is going to replace those worldly kingdoms. Now, God has been performing great miracles and signs and wonders in this generation, preparing those who are waiting for his coming. And this preparation is led by God through his word where he reveals himself as never before in human history. So once more, the Lord is using men in these last days to expound his word as he had done through Malachi 4. Now, we are in the last generation. Jesus said that the last generation, it will see Israel restored to the homeland. We know that. Matthew 24, he says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, we know that summer is nigh. Lots of signs reveal uh, that reveal to us through Israel. And Israel has become a world power in this day once they were restored to the kingdom. And even with this coronavirus, the last straggling Jews have come home. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, you can't rely on your priest, on the religious order of the day. You can't rely on your religion. We've got to rely on God himself. We, people can preach to you and prove it by the Bible. But you must understand and receive it from God. God is in his word. The Bible is God in written form. As Jesus was God in the form of a virgin-born man, we must personally meet God in the Word. For each of us must work our salvation out with fear and trembling. In Genesis 50, the time when Joseph met his brethren, they came to him afraid because the father was dead and they thought that Joseph would punish them when they realized they sold him as a slave. But Joseph made a profound statement. In verse 20, he said, But as for you, 
you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. So one of the events that we may look at the negative side, but there's a positive side if God is in it. They would have perished, but God had kept Joseph in Egypt to fill up the storehouses that they could feed the brethren. This is the end time and the food has been stored in this end time. In the book of Daniel chapter 4, the Bible tells us, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with beasts of the field. Daniel, when he was interpreted the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Friends, God is still in charge. God is in control and he will work things according to his purpose. We might look around us and look, we bogged down in our homes, but it is for you to draw closer to God. It's for you to find the time to read the messages, to listen to the DVDs and draw closer to God that will benefit you. This time of lockdown, we need to redeem the time. Many of us will take this time to clean up our houses, clean up our cupboards, clean up the sheds, uh, clean up the garden, do a whole lot of things. So until the afternoon we're tired, we have a bath and we sleep and the routine starts the next day. But is this why you think he gave you this time to be shut in, to be locked up? There's something more that he wants us to do. If we have some time left over from our busy schedule, although we are locked up, we might have time just to catch a movie or two. But the, what about your spiritual life? The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And that's Romans 10, 17. So if we don't hear the word of God, we, it's not going to inspire faith. And you could hear a whole lot of things, entertainment, motivational speeches, but that is not going to inspire faith. Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him, in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him, of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Friends, although it's shut down, we don't have the opportunity of assembling to church, we miss that seriously. But like Joseph, you find God sent him ahead with stored up food. Today people might have a problem with Wi-Fi and such like, but you've got the DVDs in your home. We believe in the fivefold ministry and it is through those ministries that God can bless you and encourage you. In Genesis 41, and he says, let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay a, a corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine. So God was storing the food, not for it to still be stored, but for you to listen, for you to watch. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, Doth not light a candle and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, call her the friends and the neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I had lost. Have you found the peace which you have lost? There may be something missing in your spiritual life, with your busy work schedule, busy family schedule, with busy everything else, you could not find it. Now, during this time of the lockdown, are you seeking diligently? If you do, you will find it. Like the man of great, uh, that found the pearl of great price. It was a great value that he sold everything to put his investment in the pearl of great price. In thirst, the messenger says, and Father, together may we work for the kingdom of heaven. This isn't a prayer. While it's enough light to see where we're getting around. 
For the hour is coming when no man can work. It's now. This was 1965. For the hour is coming when no man can work. And Father, while we have this privilege, may we redeem the time, Lord. So the message today is redeem the time. Are you redeeming the time? In closing, I'd like to tell you a little story. There was one lady who was invited to the wedding, a very close friend of hers. The wedding was in a hotel. Uh, the wedding was in a church and the reception was in the hotel. And this was outsourced to different people. And she was singing at the church, at the wedding. All excited, got a new clothes, got everything else, uh, went to the hairdressers, did a makeup and everything else. And with her husband went to the church. She was called forward to sing because she was on the program. And after the wedding, they went to the reception, which was a few kilometers away. And when she got there, the usher looked at the records and asked them, can you give me your name again, please? Gave the name and said, no, your name is not on the list. She says, no, but I sang in the church. She says, no, your name is not on the list. She began to argue and fuss with them, but she's a friend of mine, very close friend and such like. But the guy said, your name is not on the list. Then they called the security to take them away. She and her husband got to the lift, pressed the basement. In silence, they got to the car. When they got to the car and started driving home, the husband asked, what happened, dear? She said, I was so busy, I forgot to send the RSVP. Friends, have you sent the RSVP? You, have you made provisions? Are you ready for this time when we're going to spend eternity with the Lord? RSVP on time. Not like the five foolish virgins. After the voice went out, then they were trying to look for oil. Now, this is the dress rehearsal. There will be plague upon plague in the tribulation. It will be too late. If you are going to get ready, this is God's warning to us in the time we are living in. God have mercy upon us. Help us to take note and draw closer to Him. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Fathers, we gather together this evening. Lord, we want to RSVP. We want to acknowledge that you've invited us. And we want to take opportunity. And Lord, the manner in which you want us to be dressed, you've given your fivefold ministry. That through the preaching of your word, it might inspire our faith that we may stand at the post of duty. Like that man who bought that pearl of great price. May nothing come between you and us. But may we put you first. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our shortcomings, our failings. Help us, Lord. Bless us as we commit the future into your hands. Guide us during this time of this virus. Draw us closer to you. Supply our every need. And we realize without desperation, we won't get what we need. You created the situation of desperation so that we could call upon you and we could hear you speak to us. Bless us, Lord, for we ask it in the never-failing name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for sharing this time. I'll try to keep it as brief as possible because some people don't have Wi-Fi and they would like to watch it on WhatsApp. God bless you. Till we meet again in Jesus' name.
Yeah.